Yeah. Have you ever heard of the, the tale of Sir Richard Gallagher and Julia? No. No, not that I know Into of. my ears. I imagine they didn't. The man was a doctor, lad. Oh, Show wow. some fucking respect. Is it science? Aye, it is. Ooh. Aye. A bit of science. Do you well, Dr. Richard Gallagher. Mm-hmm. Uh, is what we will call the uh, United States' premier physiological exorcist. Really? Dr. Richard Gallagher has is a practicing doctor, and he is consulted on, at this point, I believe the count uh, from this article says it's up to thousands of, um, quote-unquote, potential demonic possession cases. Thousands? Thousands. Um, Do you know his branch? His branch study, uh, neurology. So, Dr. Richard Gallagher, um, to me, represents the, uh, I guess, the modernization of the idea of the exorcism. He's a as a man who approaches it, it from his own um, uh, accounts from a very scientific method. He wants he he quotes himself as uh, he says he spends more time telling people they are not possessed than actually dealing with possession cases. Which I feel like that's probably true for priests as well, though. Correct. And there's actually an interesting <laughs> uh, later on here in the article. Let me dig it up. up no, up, you're up, just up, 16. Do they find it disappointing? Is it disappointing when you find out you're not actually the, uh, you know, possessed? It's you're like, just an asshole? No, oh, damn it. <laughs> that's this just, is just how depression. I People have been saying that to me for years. So yeah. now, I mean. Angela, that's just Just, depress- just depression. It's <laughs> fine. This is, you mean this is just how I am? There's yeah. no demon inside me? No, it's just you, dude. Ah. That's just like being 14 in America. Welcome. So it's interesting that you bring that up because uh, there's a book or a a manuscript, if you want to call it that, published, published, quote unquote, in 1614 by Pope Paul V uh, called The Rite of Exorcism. Mm. Okay, so this was uh, obviously sanctioned by the Catholic Church. The Pope wrote it. Yeah, yeah. That was 16 what? 1614. So quite a bit ago. By Pope... Uh, Paul the fifth. Okay. Or Paul V. Paul V. Pope Paul V, yo. No, Paul V. Pope Paul V wrote the right of exorcism to, quote, quell a trend of lay people and priests hastily performing exorcism on people they presumed were possessed, such as victims of bubonic plague. Mm. Um, and this was from a more recent investigatory piece done by Reverend Mike Driscoll, the author of Demons, Deliverance, Discernment. Colon, separating fact from fiction about the spirit world, period, and quotation marks. Ooh. Ooh. And other okay. alliterations. I was, I was waiting for more Michael alliteration, Driscoll. man. I was waiting for more Demons alliteration after the colon. Discernment. Deal with it. Deliveries. Duh. So uh, this part, uh, a particular line that struck me from, from, this, uh, from this book was um, that the exorcist is basically stated that the exorcist should be careful to distinguish between demonic possession and... And melancholy, which was essentially the catch-all term for mental illness at the time. So they well, did have a... Yeah. That was just melancholy. That's what just you basically... You were melancholy. You know, like, melancholy. Oh, shit, thanks. What do I do about but that? But that's back mm. in the roots of, like, you have the four humors of the body and, like, your, your bile You've is got too the, high. Right. Your, right. Melancholy. We're to put some leeches I, in I see a new butt. word. Yeah. I see a new word for oh, yeah. the uh, Nick's Pry Word of the Week. Or it could be just like, are you possessed by a demon? I don't care. <laughs> Goddamn Beelzebub Strap him to the bed so we're talking like 16th century emo basically <laughs> Whatever So I, I appreciated that Because it's, to me it seems like There From 1614 There was already The kind of idea that like Alright maybe like If you think it's possession It's not necessarily possession Right like We gotta There's vetting involved So that Dr. Richard Gallagher Sort of espouses that idea That, that Not every time you think It's possession It's possession A lot of times dudes are just You know they're, they're having an off day. Just weird. It's like psychosomatic. Correct. Dr. Richard Gallagher came to prominence in the exorcism community because of his work with his his case on what he a woman he called Julia, which is not her real name, obviously, but it's a, an alias. Um, so during uh, his work with Julia, he he was approached by uh, a particular priest who was contacted by Julia. Um, as the she she contacted him as the queen of a satanic cult, and she needed help because the, the possessed person contacted the priest for help, but saying that she was the queen of hell. Yeah, <laughs> she was the queen of a satanic cult of an earthly satanic cult, yeah. and that okay. uh, the, her her appeal to this priest was that 
she didn't realize what she was getting into, and she was in over her head. <laughs> So she needed help. See, well, that's a that's a human disposition. Absolutely, like, right? like, she sure. thought she had shit under control, and she was like, "Whoa, never mind." I <laughs> time out. <laughs> yeah, I need some I help. Need help. Yeah. So she contacted a priest. Priest contacted another priest. That priest contacted several other. Like you know, it's the bureaucracy of the Catholic Church. But eventually, Doctor Richard Gallagher was was uh, sort of. They reached out to him to just assess her her mental state. Um, but the dialogue around this this particular patient's uh, ailment was possession. They're like, this woman is possessed. She's like dealing with the devil and satanic stuff. So when he came into it, he dropped all of that. It was he did physiological blood tests. He did, took it from a psychiatric. Clinical what's wrong standpoint. with this woman? Right. Correct. Um, during the what what year uh, was this again? Looks like it was a, like, it was um, nineteen ninety nine, late nineties, early two thousands was when he was dealing with this. Right now, uh, uh, apparently during their sessions, um, Doctor Richard Gallagher noticed things flying off the walls, things vibrating, Ooh. similar to the other story, um, inanimate objects kind of taking flight Limitating. or motion right. when they shouldn't. Um, in addition to that, Julia was able to speak from what he could tell. Again, this is a an Irish Catholic. Uh, neuroscientist, but he said that she suddenly would break into trances of perfect Latin and Ooh. would speak uh, at length to, about things that he he knew nothing about. Well, that's actually like an important uh, um, specific on possession is that it's uh, sometimes people say they speak in unintelligible tongues. That is false. Uh, speaking in tongues is sort of an ecclesiastical response uh, of ecstasy of being possessed by the Holy Spirit. But speaking in ancient or dead languages or foreign languages, Aramaic, Aramaic Latin, things like that, right. uh, is is definite sign of possession. Demonic possession. Mm-hmm. So in addition to the Latin, um, to, I guess, what you what, as Mandetti would describe it, even more creepy things happened. Um, the, she had very specific knowledge of uh, Richard's life happening outside of their sessions. For instance, one time, uh, she, well, she had... Intimate knowledge of the manner and time of his mother's death. Oh, um, certain God, how certain personal. Intimate uh, details of relationships within his his life, and even up to recent events, she she mentioned the vicious fight that his two cats had the night before oh, at terrible. their house, and all of these things sort of uh, led up to one night he. Um, he was attempting to make a phone call and on the other end of the line was Julia's voice. Uh, he made a phone call to a known friend of his or, or a, a number that he knew on the other end of the line was a, uh, was one of the voices that Julia communicated to him with in sort of her demonic growl. Um, even though by all accounts, she was a few miles away within the same town and he was calling a, you know, a, a, a non-local number. So this was, She's he, nowhere near a phone as well. Right. So you're hearing this like uh, otherworldly sort of voice that emanates from a, this girl uh, and then kind of starts popping out on, you know, Barbara's in the bathtub. Can I take a message? <laughs> <laughs> her name is uh, Julia. That was, I'm her roommate. That's the first voice that you go to. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, a, right. that's a demon one. Hey, what's up, guys? Demonic. <laughs> Chester Charleston is the demon. Check out my demon kiosk in downtown. My popcorn. <laughs> Damn, that was good. Oh my god, he's yep. gonna kill you. That's so it. awesome. That's good. He is going to kill you. So the thing that intrigued me most about again uh, Richard Gallagher was that he approached it from a point of skepticism initially. He wasn't like, oh, we you know it's the, As you the should. devil and we need to get him out. And he was like, okay, no, something's wrong with this woman. Let's get her some, you know, whatever lithium and let's get her like on some IVs and fluids and get her some sleep and. And that shit wasn't working. So he he eventually they reached out to again fucking multiple levels of different archbishop priest people, and uh, they they uh, quote unquote successfully exorcised this this demon. But in, in the aftermath of that, um, Doctor Richard Gallagher has become sort of a um, a focal point for American uh, possession cases to kind of help vet them and say okay well hey is this real you've seen the real thing is this a real possession case um so he kind of approaches it from that he's very much alive very much still uh sort of practicing um his trade colin Uh, colin oh my god yes yeah dr richard oh yeah no absolutely come on richard 
Don't be offended by the Irish Catholic priest thing that I just did, even though you are an Irish Catholic doctor. It was totally different. They sound. I was doing a character. Um, So even after the quote unquote um, successful exorcism of this woman, Richard Gallagher says he would still experience weird things happening. He'd go home and the lights would flicker off and wouldn't be allowed to turn back on. Or he would. Hey, your electric bill, Richard. I mean, I, I guess that is that what they do now? Instead of t- just turning off your power, they make you think you're they possessed. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Best Duke energy. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Damn, that, they're, they're that vicious. evil. They're that evil. They are. So yeah, the uh, there there are several, uh, I guess, detractors from Richard Gallagher. The people that think that he's fallen for the parlor tricks of of scammers and hucksters and people who would try to take advantage of him, and that you know none of this is actually real, but. Again, we go back to the man spent quite a bit of time trying to help these people from what I would consider to be a, like a clinical perspective, right? Like he like was trying to assess what was right. wrong with this woman and um, came to the conclusion that it was demonic possession. And and once he came to that conclusion, seemingly cured her of her of her ailment. So is it real? Is it not? Mm. Should we consult the centrifuge? Father, what's the best way to exercise?